So hello everybody, Dr. Bagdisov speaking again and we had an interesting request from one of the students of ours who had a problem with developing a research model which should rely on a discrete choice experiment. That's why I decided to record this short video. And if you develop a research model, it's usually about the effect what you would like to observe the relationship. So you need at least two variables. The one is called the independent variable and the other one is called the dependent variable. We may assume, for example, that weather has impact on how many ice cream cones people eat. So weather in this case would be the independent variable, something which has impact on something, and the dependent variable, the one which is being impacted, is then the number of ice cream cones people eat on average, for example, during the hot or cold days. And the same applies to the discrete choice experiment, and there are two types of effects which you can test using the discrete choice experiment. The first one is, as you see, a direct effect. So you have an independent variable here, and you have your dependent variable. And the question by the student was, what is an independent variable in a discrete choice experiment, and what is the dependent variable? The independent variable is the manipulation, something we manipulate because it happens before. We do it intentionally and then we observe the dependent variable. What happens then? It is the decision. And my manipulation is a set of attributes and levels which I show to you. You see a combination of different attributes and respective levels and then based on these attributes you decide whether you would like to have this option or don't have this option or if you have a different type as we had it in our example whether you would like to have this option online or offline or if you decide for example to buy or to rent whatever you see on the screen so the manipulation is what i show you and your decision this is the independent variable and the dependent variable is your final decision and the interesting thing is that this creature choice experiment is an experiment it means there is a causal relationship i show something at t1 this happens before and it has influence on your decision at T2 in, in its latest, in the second point of time. So you may need a second or a minute in order to decide, but this decision happens after the manipulation. And if I find out that this decision deviates depending on the manipulation, then I can claim that there is a causal relationship, which is very important in science. And these creatures experiments do allow you to test not the correlation but the causal relationship so you will just know that not that items co-appear but the one has impact on the other one with a discretuous experiment you can also measure the moderating effects the moderating effects are uh, those which show the conditions under which the direct effect appears or under which the direct effect is stronger or weaker so each time you can formulate your research question is as under which condition the relationship holds or under which condition is this relationship strong and under which condition is the relationship weak, we talk about the moderation. The scheme is the same. You have the independent variable on the left-hand side, your manipulation set of attributes which appear, and your decision on the right-hand side, your dependent variable, the outcome variable of your decision based on the manipulation which you saw. What, what is here new is the moderating variable. I can also test under which condition. And this is an interesting step because actually it can happen that not only the appearance of attributes matters, but also the co-appearance of several attributes. Uh, in one of my presentations, I showed an example with a car and power of engine. And we had a yellow car and a black car, and we had the power of engine of, let's say, 25 kWh and 35 kWh. And this seems to be an interesting feature to test it as direct effect but what if the black cars are preferred with a high power engine because those people who buy a black car they use it not only to visit the theater or to i don't know to make a small trip in the city but also to go outside the city and then on the autobahn they need more power it can happen that the black cars are preferred exactly with a powerful engine and with a weak engine engine they will not be preferred anymore and in the event of yellow car, it's quite good that those who buy a yellow car, they probably would like to look nice, go to theater, go somewhere else. And for big trips outside the city, they use a second car, which is a black car. Let's just assume that it holds. If it happens, then if a yellow car appears, engine will not matter. It will just drop in 
uh, in its power. So those who see the yellow car will be indifferent with regard to engine, and those who see a black car will be very uh, wanting to have a very powerful engine. So there will be a moderation effect. The color will interact with the power of engine. Uh, statistically, if you run the analysis, you run the binary logistic regression and you introduce an additional relationship, not only the direct effects of your attributes, color and the power of engine, you also introduce a moderation of multiplication of these two items. It's pretty simple, simple to do using SPSS or Stata or whatever software you're using. So, Consequently, with a discretious experiment, you can test two types of relationship, the direct effects, that's what you usually use them for, but also the moderating effects. Uh, I have to mention in advance that if you attempt to measure the moderating effects, your sample size should be also bigger, because you need to see that all participants of your experiments went through different combinations of these items, of coappearance of items, coappearance of your attributes and levels. That is why if you assume that there is a moderating effect and you would like to test it, you need also a larger sample size, which should be a rule of thumb 1.5 or 2 times higher than if the one you use for direct effects. Of course, it depends on how many decisions people have to make and it depends on how many moderating effects you would like to test. Because if you have more items, it can happen that you assume that there is also other co-appearances of items which will matter for the final decision. I hope it helped. I hope it helped you with your research model. Um, if there are any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. Below, thank you and have a nice day. Bye bye.